Hello everyone, uh, it looks like we got it working. Um, little technical issues with getting Maple to work on the app server. They had to fix something. Not sure exactly what they did, but they found a workaround. Um, how is everyone this evening? Um, not watching me, obviously. Um, I don't see anyone in chat. <laughs> Nobody's here because I'm eight minutes late. Um, so I feel sad. Um, hello everyone, my name is Scott Grizzard. This is Calculus uh, Fall... Uh, sorry, spring 2021. Um, tonight, we're going to be talking about um, uh, sequences um, and limits of sequences. Oh, there's someone. Hmm. Um, as usual, there is chat and Twitch, uh, but remember that chat and Twitch is public. Um, and there is also chat in Discord on the class Discord server for those in the class. Uh, the class disco server is private to the class, um, where you may ask questions and answer any polls. So five poll here. How do we feel tonight? Let's see if the five polls working tonight. Hey, check it out. One thing worked. Um, so there's a poll in discord. So if you're in my class, you can log on to discord and see the poll and, oh, look, someone responded. Thank you. Ooh, lots of people. We actually have people. Okay. Three. <laughs> four. Any more? We got four. We got four lives. All right. Okay. So tonight what we want to... So last time, uh, just to give you a quick... Uh, just remember a quick rehash here. Last time, we talked about... Um, we ended by talking about sequences. And sequences were just... Um, functions from the natural numbers, and we were particularly interested in rational sequences, which are just an infinite list of rational numbers, okay? So remember that a rational number is a fraction um, of two whole numbers or of an uh, integer and a, um, and a positive integer. So we call that that sequences that rational sequences are um, functions from n into q, which is to say they are infinite less of I'm gonna say integer fractions all right so let's give an example of a sequence so let's let SN so here's an example of a rational sequence right so I've got SN I'm gonna say let SN let's get rid of this Let's let Sn equal the following. So we'll let Sn equal 1 over n. So this would be the sequence 1 over 1, 1 over 2, 1 over 3, 1 over 4. I'm leaving out the 1 over 0 term because I just don't want to deal with that type of thing. Uh, 1 over 5, and so on and so forth. Okay. How do we feel about this notion of a sequence? It's an infinite list of rational numbers. One to five. Right, an infinite list of fractions. Okay. And now we closed when we had these weird little sequences that were kind of going somewhere. Okay. So let's look at the following thing, okay? We're going to have Bob. And um, so this would be an example. Let's do another example here. Let's get rid of this one. And let's suppose the following. Suppose Bob is on the beach. Okay. 
And Bob is sitting here at, um, we'll say we're sitting at the point zero. We'll call Bob's current location zero. And there's a margarita here that is... At the point, we'll call this point one. Okay. And this is called the margarita you can never reach. Now, usually it's called the mountain you can never reach, but this is Florida, and the third tallest mountain in Florida is Space Mountain at Disney World. Okay, so here in Florida, we call this the margarita you can never reach. Okay. And Bob, every day, Bob goes half the distance. Okay. How do we feel about this idea of what Bob's about to do? He's going to go half the remaining distance every day. One to five on that idea. Okay. So, and this, by the way, is, is something that I think his name was Zeno. Uh, you can look it up. Zeno's Paradox. I think that's the one. Um, I put a, I linked a video to it on the uh, notes page in Canvas. Uh, it's kind of cool. It's three uh, paradoxes that kind of set up calculus. But what's going to happen here is that on day one, uh, on day yeah, zero, Bob is at zero on day two on day one bob is at one half and then on day two bob is at uh three quarters right because one quarter is half the remaining distance and so on and so on and so forth Okay, in other words, on day N, Bob is at 1 minus 1 over 2 to the N. Okay? Right, so for example, uh, S3 equals 1 minus 1 over 2 cubed, which equals 1 minus 1 over 8, which equals 7 over 8. Okay, so how do we feel about this 1 to 5, this kind of thing that's going on? Right, so every day I'm going half the distance. That means on day n... Bob is at 1 over 2 to the n. One minus 1 over 2 to the n. Okay. Does Bob ever reach the margarita? Well, here's a big philosophical thing. Right? If you ask an engineer, he's going to say, well, yeah, at some point he's close enough. Okay? So one to five, how do we feel about at some point it'll be close enough? He might not actually be at one, but at some point he's close enough. Okay? So the question is, what do we mean by close enough? Okay. 
Okay. Well, my response is you decide. As long as what you decide is some positive number. I'm going to call that close enough. And you tell me when it's close enough. So give me a number. Give me some positive number really small. How about 0 0.01. Which is equaling, which equals 1 over 100. That's a fairly small number, yes? Okay. Is there a day that Bob is close enough? Under this situation, is there a day when Bob is close enough to one? How do we feel about what this question is asking? In other words, is there some day when Bob gets there? Okay. Well, let's look at it. Um, at day, let's say at day, uh, well, it's actually not that far. At day eight, what is two to the eighth? Anybody? Yeah, 256. So if I do one, if if by day eight, I am already close enough. Only one over 256 away. In fact, I'm there by day seven, which is 128. Okay? But the point is that there is a day that Bob is close enough to one. Okay? Now, for any close enough, And that's the point. For any close enough, there's a day that Bob is close enough. If I say close enough, if close enough is 1 over 500, Day 9 is sufficient. If I say close enough is 1 over 1,000, that's day 10. At, you know, so 1 over 156 would be that one. I'm sorry, 1 over 
560. 1 over 5. 1 over 5. I can't speak tonight. 1 over 512. There we go. Right? And then if I go all the way to the 10th power, I'm going to be at 1024. Okay? 1 over 1024. How do we feel about this idea about close enough? Okay. So let's let close enough... We'll call close enough epsilon. And we'll call this n. Okay. So right now we have for any epsilon greater than zero, for any close enough, there exists a day n So that Sn is uh, within L minus epsilon, L plus epsilon. In other words, if L equals 1, for any epsilon, for any close enough, there is a day so that Bob is within close enough. Okay? How do we feel about that concept? Okay. I got one voter. It's not quite done yet. However, we have a problem. What about SN equals um, negative 1 to the N? I know. It's a weird thing. Right? This is So someone's saying they understand what I'm saying, but don't understand how it's written. What I'm saying is for any close enough, which I'm calling epsilon, there exists some day so that Bob SN is Bob is close enough. So this right here, if I think about this as an interval, Right? Here's L, 1 in this case. And here is L minus close enough. And here is L plus close enough. Okay? So what I'm saying is that there comes a day when Bob gets close enough. How is that? L is just a number. In this case, it's 1. But I have a problem. What about this sequence? So this one right here corresponds to the sequence Yeah, let's do n comma 1 minus a n. 
All right. So this right here, if I graph this I function, one minus one minus one over two to the n. Okay. I wind up with something that looks a lot like. Let me zoom this in. Uh, that's not going to help. This thing goes to one very quickly. Okay. So I'm going to wind up with something that looks like this. Okay. I've got dot, dot. Here's day zero. I'm at zero. Here's day one. I'm at a half. Here's day two. I'm at 0.75. Here's day three. Here's day four. Here's day five. Here's day six. Here's day seven. Here's day eight. I'm going to really have to zoom, or day nine. I'm going to have to really zoom in here to detect any appreciable difference. Right? I'm never quite at one. But I'm, well, this thing makes it look like I'm at one because it runs out of floatings. I'd have to actually use it because this just converges very quickly. But I never quite get to one despite what the computer says because the computer is rounding. But I get really, 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 really close. In fact, no matter how close you want me to get, I can get you there. Okay. But let's look at another sequence here. Let's look at this one. Negative one. Let's look at uh, n. Sorry, negative one. to the end. Now, this one's a little different. This one's going to oscillate between one on one hand. How do I do this? How do I sh how do I zoom in? Oh, that's the cap lex key. That's why that's not working. Right? This one's going to oscillate. It's never going to settle. Right? This one goes one, negative one, one, negative one, one, negative one, one, negative one, one. There's the other one, right? This one never settles. One to five, how do we feel about that? Oops. By the way, this is a big concept lecture. Um... You know, uh, it, uh, not all lectures are going to be like this. This one is, this is actually one of the hardest concepts that we're going to study. This idea of a limit, the formal idea of a limit, this arbitrariness, okay? Because it's actually the thing that was developed last, okay? So the way that this worked in history um, is that Archimedes developed the idea of basically infinitesimal integration, accumulation. Uh, Newton and Leibniz came up with derivatives and the connection between the two. And Cauchy, right? And this is like, look at these guys' dates, right? These are 1,600 peoples. And then Cauchy comes along in the, uh, in the 1800s and comes up with this idea of a limit. So this, this idea of a limit is actually the harder thing, right? But what about this? This is SN. Oh, I'm sorry. I just pointed to stuff and you couldn't see any of it. Right? So uh, the point of stuff I was pointing to is this kind of note at the top. That integrals were developed first, derivative second, limit start. Sorry about that. So I have this function. SN equals negative 1 to the N. And this thing just oscillates. It just goes up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. And it never settles. And what I don't want is I don't want this to have a limit, right? Okay, I don't want this to do, to, to have, this never settles. It doesn't have that settling property that this other one does. This other one that I had before settles at one. Well, this never settles. It just bounces up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down. Okay. Let's capture that. Let's 
So, as I said, this thing just never settles. Okay, it just bounces between one and negative one. So I want this to not have a limit. There are worse functions too, right? So if I go up here, if I do the sign of um, pi uh, over n. Oh, that's going to be really bad. If I just do the sine of n, uh, it needs to be n comma sine n. Right, this is not a rational sequence because it's got irrational numbers in it. But as you can see, this thing never settles. But I can get arbitrarily close to 1, and I can get arbitrarily close to negative 1, right? As a matter of fact, I can even land on them. But I, I, I don't want this here, right? Because this never settles. It just kind of goes all over the place. Here, I can land on 1 and negative 1, but it never stays there. And I want to capture that. I want to not only reach the margarita, I want to get stuck there. So really, it's not the margarita you can never reach. It's the margarita you can never really get away from. So I not only want to get there, I want to be in Margaritaville forever, okay? I not only want to reach the margarita, I want to enjoy it for eternity. Okay. Well, let's look at what that would look like. So, um, I was on the tablet, yes. So let's do something like sign in, sign of... Um, See. Pi over two, that's gonna give me irrationals. N uh let's just do sine of uh pi over n. Uh that's two. That's doesn't bounce around enough. Um uh two pi over n is gonna give me something not so nice either. Let's see, sine of How about sine of pi over 2n? Oops. It's not working. There it goes. Over n. Nope, nope. I don't want the sign there. There we go. I want you to be in parentheses. Sorry, you can't see any of this. I'm playing with this thing and you can't see it. Must be incredibly boring. So I want the, it's not working. Why is it not working? Yes. Sine of n pi over two over n. There we go. 
Well, what about this? This is nice and rational because this n pi over 2 business gives me rational numbers. How about this business? Should I be okay with this having a limit? How do we feel about this one? Right. So what's going on here? I've got kind of, you know, it goes to one, then to zero, then to something, then the negative one third, then it comes back up to zero. And every time it does a pass, it gets closer and closer to zero. And then it stays there. How do we feel about that? And I want this to be okay. I want this to be okay, where it kind of gets closer and closer and closer every time it makes a pass. Matter of fact, let's zoom in here. And let's, oops, not that way, that way. Let's make this bigger, this bigger, this smaller. I want to capture this. This is okay behavior. All right. It oscillates, but it gets, yeah, it's like a bouncy ball coming to a stop, right? Or like one of those little springy things, right? You start the little spring and it goes, it's kind of like that, a spring with resistance, right? It, it, it just stops in the middle. It never stops, but it keeps getting closer and closer and closer and closer to stopping. It doesn't actually stop. Okay. But it gets closer every time. And that's behavior I want to capture. So this was... Um, sign... of n pi over 2 over n. This is Sn equals that. And I want this to have a limit. That's an over, by the way. That's a fraction. I want this. This keeps oscillating. but closer and closer to zero with each pass. So this one should be okay. I'm getting closer and closer to zero with each pass, okay? So if I'm at any arbitrary distance away, I stay there, okay? And I want that to be okay. All right, so I need to modify my thing. So what I'm going to say is, instead of the instead of the margarita, okay, instead of the margarita I can never reach, I want it to be the margarita I can never escape. So I could I get an arbitrary distance away and then I stay there. Okay, so let's write that out as a definition. We'll take our old definition here. Let's grab it. Beep, 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 beep. Let's say close enough. Ba, ba, ba. Here it is. So this I want to keep. Copy. Paste. Okay, so let's get rid of this. And what we're going to say is the following. We're going to say that the limit, let the 
This will be our big definition. Okay. The limit as n goes to infinity of, uh, let's move you down. Because I'm going to write, want to write under this. The limit as n goes to infinity of Sn equals L if for any epsilon greater than zero, there exists a day so that For any day after my big day, Bob is still arbitrarily close to the margarita. Okay? In other words, I get close enough and stay close enough. Whatever your close enough is, for any close enough, I get close enough and I stay close enough. For any arbitrary close enough. One to five, how do we feel about that? For any close enough, I get close enough and stay close enough. Well, I don't want to say keep getting closer because I'm okay with the idea that I'm landing on the thing. Okay? So I'm okay with the idea that, for example, SN... Let's do, and I want constants. I want getting there to be okay. to be okay. For example, I want Sn equals zero to have a limit of zero. Okay? So it's not, I'm not getting any closer. I'm on it. I'm there. You could kind of just say that intuitively, but that's not really what captures it. What really captures this is for any close enough I get close enough and stay close enough. So the picture, you can make yourself a picture associated with this definition. Um, oh. Or apparently I can't because I just let it time out. Uh, let's see if I can make it work again. Yeah, so here's kind of the idea. Um, so let me pull up screen two here. The margarita is the L. Right, so here's a picture for you. Can I make it big? Okay, so here's my kind of thing. This epsilon here is my close enough, okay? Now, if I hit play, what, for any close enough, there's someday, right, here, once I get to this 
day here. Every day thereafter, I'm trapped between those epsilons. And it will work for any arbitrary epsilon. So if you give me an epsilon, I can find you a day. You give me a close enough, and I find you a day that Bob got there and stayed there. Okay? Well, in effect, you do. Okay, so the question is, so we don't get good, good, do we get good closer? So what you want to say is, for any close enough, I get there, and then I get closer and closer and closer, if I understand your thing. And that's an intuitive definition, okay? That is a good intuition behind it. For any close enough, I'm going to get close enough and keep getting closer, as long as I'm okay with the fact that I'm landing on it. Okay, that's a good definition for the intuition. However, it doesn't help you remember this, right? This definition here, this captures this. For any close enough, epsilon greater than zero, there exists a day when for every subsequent day, I'm close. I'm still close enough. In other words, I enjoy my margarita forever. Okay? Now, I'm not saying your, your intuition is wrong. It's right. I'm just saying this is a little bit more helpful if you want to memorize this definition. And if you want to use it. Let's do an example. Okay. I want to find out, uh, is there a limit? for um um uh for sn equals 1 over n so what is the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n okay i say that this is zero Okay. All right. Proof. Let epsilon be some number greater than zero. Okay. Then Um, consider uh, 1 over epsilon. Okay? There is some natural number uh, n so that n is greater than 1 over epsilon, which means and since 1 over n it, since for since for any n greater than n, 1 over n is less than uh, 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 1 over n, which is less than 1 over 1 over epsilon, which equals epsilon, the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n equals 0. Okay, so what did I just say? Something extremely confusing, right? I just said there's some natural number n so that this is greater than this. So when I have this thing here, I just said there's some n here. So whatever epsilon you give me,
There's zero. I'm saying whatever epsilon you give me. One over epsilon is going to be, you know, large, right? So I'm going to let n, there's some natural number that's bigger than 1 over epsilon. And if I choose that, then 1 over n is always less than epsilon. 1 to 5, how do we feel like about that? P.S. That is new material this year. I'm not sure if it's going to fly. If it doesn't fly, I'm going to scratch it. You got to vote. Do we keep this or scratch it? Good example or bad? Okay. Bad. <laughs> what I'm saying is this, okay? I want to say that the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n equals 0, okay? So, give me, give me an epsilon. Somebody give me a really small number. Okay, so epsilon equals 1 over 5, 12. Okay, so 1 over epsilon equals 5, 12. Yes or no? How do we feel about that? Okay, so n, let n equal, I don't care, 600. Okay? Then, n is greater than 1 over epsilon. Is everyone on board with that? N is the first day or a day. N is a day. N, big N is this day here or some day after it. I don't care. Okay? That could be N. That could be N. But the point is that every day after this N, I'm black, not red. Okay? Okay. All right. So it's one of the days. It's a day so that every day thereafter, I'm within, I'm, I'm within close enough. One to five. How do we feel about that? Yeah, the day I get close enough and stay close enough, right? Because here, on this day, I'm close enough. But there's some day after where I leave again. And now I'm in, now I'm in, now I leave. Now I'm in, but now I leave. But now I'm in, and 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 in. So it's not only the day I'm close enough. It's the day that every day thereafter, I'm still close enough. And that's weird, okay? This is a very difficult definition. In fact, aside from the read, this is the second hardest definition in the entire class, and it's happening on the second day. Okay? It stinks. So, for any n greater than n, n must be greater than 1 over epsilon. Okay? 
Thus, n, 1 over n, is less than epsilon, which means 1 over n is inside 0 minus epsilon. I don't care about that. 0 plus epsilon. Yes, so the n I want is when I was when you stay inside the lines and no longer bounce out. That's perfect. And small n is the days after. So, margarita, for any close enough, 3 exists some big day, so that for any, for any day after, Bob, on that day is close enough to the margarita. Okay? How do we feel about this now, one to five? Oops. Okay, it's a hard thing. There are two, there are actually one, two, three quantifiers in this statement. Okay, this is a hard definition. Okay, this is the, as I said, it's really hard. We're not going to do the formal definition of a function. We're going to do one that's some uh, a limit. We're going to do one that's a little different. But if you understand this definition, you'll actually understand the big concept of the limit. Okay. Even the limit of a function. You'd only need the limit of a sequence to really understand the limit of a function. Okay. Now, let's compute some of these. I'm going to give you a theorem. Okay, first of all, if I oscillate forever, if I never settle, I say that the limit as n goes to infinity of Sn does not exist. If, however, I shoot off to positive infinity, okay? So how do we feel about those two statements? If I never settle, I'm going to say it doesn't exist. So here is never settling. Okay, that never settles. Now, let's give one that shoots off to infinity. And let's do one that shoots off slowly to infinity. Okay, let's do... Um, let's do the natural log of the n. 
that may be a little bit too slow. Um, now let's do n over five. Let's do something that's not quite that slow. That's just too slow. Now look at what happens here with n over five. It's never settling, but it just goes off to infinity. One to five, how do we feel about that? Okay, that's just shooting off to infinity. Now, here's a trick. Here's a theorem. And we're going to prove it much later in the class. Um, but I'm going to give you the theorem now. This is called nothing else matters. All right, this is the first edition of nothing else matters. Okay. If F or SN is a ratio of two polynomials I should say polynomial like sequences. Oh, you can't see me, sorry. It's back, right? Yeah. Okay. If S is a ratio of two polynomial-like things, okay? So let's say Sn equals S plus, let's say 2S plus 1 over S. Only the terms... Only the therms with the highest power on the top and bottom matter. Okay, so when I do 2s plus 1 over s, To n, I'm sorry, that should be an n, not an s. Okay. When I do this term here, uh, let me make this zoom in. Let's get rid of u and u. Right? This thing is going to go to 2. And how do I know that? So I do Sn equals 2n plus 1 over n. Now, the thing with the highest term is n. Because this is n to the first, n to the first. So the limit So the limit as n goes to infinity of 2n plus 1 over n equals the limit as n goes to infinity of 2n over n. Now I cancel the n's. And I wind up with the number 2. Okay, let's do another one. Uh, I want to use a different color here. The limit as n goes to infinity of um, 2n squared plus 6n plus 1 over n squared minus 25 equals. All right, what do we think that limit is going to be?
Hmm? Yeah, two. Why? Right? Here's the picture. Okay, technical issue, not sure what happened, but I'm back. Okay, so why does this work? So I think you saw this. Did you guys see the graph? Okay, so there's the graph of this thing. Now, why did this work? Okay. So why is this two? Someone said it was two and then the thing died. Okay. So why did this work? Well, I've got the limit as two to the end here. I picked the top terms. I'm going to write nothing else matters because that's the name of the theorem. I should have written it right here too. And I take 2n squared, so I need my limit sign, the limit as n goes to infinity of 2n squared over n squared. And then the n squares cancel. And all I'm left with is 2. Okay, that's why that works. One to five, how do we feel about that? Nothing else matters. Because nothing else matters. Um, the first term has the highest power. So it's the only term that's going to matter. I've got two polynomials of n, and they're being divided by each other. If that's the case, the only term that matters is, is the only term that matters is going to be the term that has the largest exponents. Let's do another one. Let's do the limit as n goes to infinity of 8n cubed minus n to the fifth plus uh, 2,000 or 200 over n to the fourth minus 6n cubed. Okay. Now, the only term that's going to matter here, uh, let's get, let's give this some, it doesn't matter. The only term that's going to matter here, I know, he doesn't like the, the, he doesn't like the, uh, he doesn't, he wants you to divide through by end of the fifth. So someone's saying that Mr. C tried this using Mr. C. Yes. Because he's very, you know, which is appropriate for the, the class that he's teaching, which is pre-calc. You have to be very, you know, precise. Here, we, gotta, we need to be precise, but we also want the intuition. And the intuition is that the thing that's going to dominate this conversation is that negative end of the fifth. Okay? So I'm going to apply my theorem. Nothing else matters. Oh, and by the way, Mr. C would be perfectly happy with this when we prove the theorem. And we are going to prove the theorem, 
but we're going to prove the theorem probably in module three. Okay? So he'd be fine with it as long as you proved it ahead of time. We're using it before we prove it. So Mr. C will yell at me. So I'm going to pick off the top terms here. So that's going to be negative into the fifth over into the fourth. Okay, and then the four is going to, the this is going to cancel. That whole thing's going to cancel. I'm going to wind up with the limit as negative n, which equals negative infinity. How do we feel about that last one, one to five? I took the two biggest ones, the negative end of the fifth and the end of the fourth. Okay. Um, I started late, so I'm going to go over a little bit, and we had technical issues. Um, so I'm, I'm actually not, because this thing will only take me five minutes. Let's talk about what a real number is. Okay. Let x not equal infinity and x not equal negative infinity. Oops, I don't want that. So I'm excluding these two. X is a real number if there exists some rational sequence S so that X equals the limit as n goes to infinity of s n. Okay, what did I just say? I just said that all the real numbers, that infinity and negative infinity are not real numbers. And then I said that x is a real number if there exists some rational sequence s, so that x is the limit of that sequence. Okay? So... Give me an example of a limit of, well, let's do some examples here. Example. Okay. I say zero is a real number. Because it is the limit of Sn equals one over N. I say the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n equals 0. Okay? How do we feel about that 1 to 5? Okay, E is a real number since it is the limit since E equals the limit as N goes to infinity of 1 plus 1 over N to the N. And this is that formula from pre-calc that you got. This is a variation of that formula from pre-calc that you got if you kept compounding interest. Again and again and again and again.
All right, somebody else give me another another um another um uh, uh um uh, somebody else give me another uh another real number. Sixteen. All right. Well, sixteen is the limit of S n equals sixteen minus one over n. Right. These are all rational numbers. Okay. Anybody else? How about pi? Pi is a real number. Okay. Anyone got a sequence that converges to pi? How about this one? 3, 3.1, 3.14, 3.142, I'm sorry, 3.14, what is it? 3.141, 3.1417, and so on and so on and so forth. That's kind of a cheap one, isn't it? There's also something called Leibniz's formula. And believe me, I had to look it up. It's also the sequence. Uh, it's the limit as n goes to infinity, pi equals, and here's the an annoying summation one. And no, I'm not going to ask you to remember any of these. Um, so I do the sequence as the sum as n goes to infinity, k equals, what does it start at? Uh, so it's, it's one minus one third plus one fifth minus one seventh plus one ninth minus da, 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 da. So it's going to be, uh, let's see, it's going to be K plus two on the bottom. Yeah, it's going to be K plus two on the bottom. Um, and I'm going to start it at one and I'm going to have, uh, this is going to be one over, uh, nope, that needs to be 2k. Needs to be one over k. So I want one. Three five. I'm trying to remember how to do this off the top of my head, and it's not working. Uh, so k starts at one, so it's k. Uh, how do you do that? Why am I not able to do this? Two k plus one, right? Two k plus one is going to give me all the evens. I start at zero, and I do two k plus one. Thank you. And then the first one's positive to the K. I'll have things that I should have worked out ahead of time. Well, these are all the real numbers. So it's to, it's to give an example of what it means for something to be a real number. So X is a real number if there exists some rational sequence S so that x is the limit of sn, as long as it's not infinity. Okay, so it's kind of a, a deep philosophical thing. Okay. Okay, one to five, how do we feel about that? That there is a definition of rational number, of, of real numbers. Okay, I've got a definition for it. Now, I'm not going to ask you that. It's kind of a, a, a thing to say, hey, look at that. That's a 
uh, that's what it means, though. It means that there's some converging sequence and that, that a real number is the limit of some rational, uh, a sequence of rational numbers, which is actually kind of interesting in a sense. Okay. So that's what I had for today. Uh, we didn't make it to functions, but that's okay. I'm fine with that. Okay. So next time... So this was one of the big theory lectures. Have fun. Next time we're going to talk about... So next week, we're going to talk about limit loss. And computing limits. Right, so that's how we actually calculate these things. Are there any questions? I saw the one question about the class structure. Anything else? Okay, well, that's it for tonight. Um, I promise this is one of the more theoretical lectures um, with like head head hurting. You know, this is the this is one of the big you know. Uh, head pain lectures. Um, and I, I promise that there's like two more of these in the whole class that are really like this, um, that are just concept after concept after concept. And as I said, this is really the second hardest concept in the entire class, and it's happening on the second day of class. So this is really kind of brutal. Um, I'm, I'm not happy about this. Some people skip this one. I'm skipping the formal definition of the limit of a function. Um, um, so, you know, it's, 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 um, I, as I said, I know this one was brutal. Um, I promise you that most of them aren't um, this brutal. Uh, but this particular lecture is just brutal because it's got big concept after big concept after big concept. But I tried to make it fun by talking about Bob and the margarita you can never reach. Okay. No, so... Um, what I'm saying is that there's two more of these really complicated. So there's all these lectures, but they're dispersed in the whole class. There's two more of these lectures that are just concept heavy. Okay. Without a lot of examples, right? It's just, it's getting a concept and that's hard. And I get that. Um, so we're going to be doing, so there's still kind of, there's two more of them. They're just nothing but concept. Um, and even then I tried to do examples. I kind of blew this one. I don't think I'll do this one next time. Um, not that one, this one. But um, I was trying to put more examples in. I did the computing things, which is kind of nice. Um, and that's, you know, there will be, as I said, two more of these brutal ones. But they're not in a row, right? We're going back to examples and computing things and kind of, you know, fuzzy, warm math stuff that'll bring you math joy again. Um, but then um, there are a couple of these couple more of these really hard ones. Uh, are there any other questions? Okay. Well, then that's it for tonight. Uh, sorry for all the glitches. Um, I'll try to... It's going to take me a little while to edit the YouTube video um, because I've got to fix the, uh, the glitches. So I hope you had a good time and I hope you figured... I hope you have this notion of what the um, the um, the the limit is this idea of arbitrarily close and staying arbitrarily close okay because that's really the big idea arbitrarily close and staying arbitrarily close okay all right that's it um, person who wanted a question about peer leading please talk to me about it in uh, in Discord real fast.